In this video, we're going to be talking about financial reports in Odoo. With Odoo 17 came a brand new financial report framework. And in this video, we're going to go through the different reports along with some of the options in those reports, as well as how they're structured and how you can edit and create new ones. Now, we're not going to go into so much detail about how to create new reports, but with this information, you'll be able to play around and create your own reports based on the information we provide today. So I'm going to go into accounting here in a different environment with some dummy data loaded. I'm going to search for accounting right from the dashboard, which will bring us into our accounting dashboard. Now at the top of our screen, we're going to click on reporting. And again, depending on your localization, you may have different reports, but you always have a balance sheet and a profit and loss statement. These are going to be all of your gap compliant reports at the top. But we also have things like your journal, uh, general ledger and your journal report or your partner ledger, or age receivables and age payables. We're going to look at some of these reports in detail throughout our course. But for today, let's just take a look at our balance sheet. Now inside of our balance sheet, you'll notice that we have a header bar that allows you to do uh, comparisons, select date ranges and filter down exactly what you're looking at. So let's go through these items one by one. First, on the left side of our screen, we'll be able to export this information as a PDF. We can save this as an Excel file and download it, or we can save it right to our database and store it in our documents module. To the right of that, we'll see a compare or a date range. We can select today, end of last quarter, end of last month, end of last financial year, or a specific date. We can compare this data to a previous period as long as you have data to compare it to. So if I click on previous period here, you'll see as of 2024 and 2023 here. This is also going to give us a percent difference so that we can easily repair or compare our financial reports. This is going to be available for most of our reports depending on the data that we're looking at. Then we can filter down our journals. We can look at just our bank journals just our cash journals, or select different journals that you want to look at. Under our analytic group by, we haven't talked about this yet, but we'll be able to group this by analytic account or analytic plans. And then under our options, we can include draft entries, include analytic simulations. We can unfold all of these. So if we want to unfold here, it's going to drill down and show everything. We can view this as a cash basis and hide lines with zero items or zero value. Now inside of our financial report here, we can drill in to any of these. We can see our balances, but we can also click into our balances for more detail. So if I click that value here, it's gonna bring us into our account move lines with all of our journal items. You can further click into these journal items. You can look at the journal entry if needed. And that's going to bring us right to our reconciliation screen. So as you can see, everything can, everything can be drilled into. And we can scroll down just to see all of our items. And these are separated by headers. We have our assets, liabilities, equities, and then our liabilities plus equities. Now this is going to be generally the same for all of our, do, all of our reports. Some of them have free searching search bars that you can search into. And we'll look at these throughout the course as I mentioned earlier. But what I want to do now is look at some of the options that come with financial reports. You can see this little gear icon if you're in developer mode, or you can go into configurations and we'll scroll down and we'll look for our financial reports. So under management here, we have our accounting reports, which are going to show us all of our out of the box accounting reports. Let's take a look at, for example, our balance sheet that we just looked at. Now this is going to lay out the structure of that report and anything we edit here will actually show on our financial report in real time. This is especially helpful if you need to change the structure of your report or if you have a custom report that you want to build based on one of the reports that already exists. You can create a brand new one or go to our action menu here and click on duplicate. We'll just play around with the default balance sheet one just so we can get an idea of what's possible. So first we have three tabs at the top. We have lines, which are going to lay out exactly what we're looking at on our screen. We have columns, 
which are going to show us the total balances or the total columns that we're looking at. So of course these lines are our rows and this is going to be our column which is the balance is what we care about. And then we have options here. And this is where some of the stuff gets interesting. We have some generic options. If we want to load more limit, so if we want to be able to load more items, we can set a limit here, have prefix groups threshold, accounts group, whether it's optional, enabled by default, or never, multi-company, so use this to select uh, between different companies. You can have this disabled or use tax units. Under advanced here, we can allow ourselves to unfold all, growth comparison, period comparison, cash basis. We can select a date range. And these are all the options that we looked through. So depending on the report, some of this may be applicable or not. At the right side of our screen, we have our default opening. It opens to today. Horizontal grouping, if we wanted to set some horizontal grouping. And we're gonna look at how we can do that in just a second. Analytic group by and filtering. Account types, if we want to just look at receivables, payables, payables and receivables, or disabled. If we want to be able to filter by journals, by partners, by draft entries, on reconciled entries, uh, favorited filters, and if we want to be able to hide lines at zero. So these are all the different options that we can apply to a single report. Most interesting is our ability to filter, and the ability to filter really comes from our journal items. So in just a second, we'll come back to our balance sheet, but first I'm gonna go into accounting and go to journal items. I'm just gonna search for something random here. Maybe I filter this by sales. And I can save this search in our search bar as sales. And I'm gonna save this. Now this is a favorited search that can now be utilized inside of our financial reports if we enable it. So going back to our configurations and going into our financial reports. So I'll scroll down into management and go into our accounting reports. I can search for balance sheet up top and we're gonna click into our balance sheet. Under options, once again, we can decide whether or not we wanna utilize favorite filters. And if I check this, then there's gonna be an option for me to filter down by my favorite journal items filters. So now under our reporting, if I go to our balance sheet, and I look at filters here, we have our sales filter. Now all of our journal entries that, are, that we filter down by on our journal items are going to be compiled and only those will be used in this financial report. And if I deselect it, we'll see that change in real time. Now let's navigate back to our financial reports once again. And let's look at the structure of how this is all set up. It's pretty logical and it adds up in, some, in a sort of recursive way where we have our assets. This is the top level, which can be, you can drag and drop this. And then we have our current assets plus fixed assets plus non-current assets. So let's click on assets here. We're not gonna spend too much time on all this, but I'm gonna point out some of the obvious, most important things. Here we have a code, this code is TA. And this is important because each one of these line items has a code. And it also has a label of what we're trying to aggregate. So here we have a label of balance. The computation at engine is an aggregate of other formulas. And the formula here, just like if you were doing math problems or using Excel, we're going to get ca.balance, fa.balance, and pnca.balance. And what these correspond to is our current assets, our plus fixed assets and plus non-current assets. Each of these having a different code and inside of this upper level group, we're going to add those totals together. And we're going to save it with this label of balance. And the computation again is aggregate other formulas, but there's other options that are used in different reports, such as using an Odoo domain to get the journal entries that you're looking for. We're gonna, we can look for tax tags, we can look for certain prefixes on account codes. We can look for a custom Python function that would be written in the back end, which would require a development or an external value. And there are some other options here, the data scope, the figure type, if we wanna carry over the balance from one line to the next, 
These are not used very often, and this is much more advanced. What I really want to you know, hit home here is that we can have an aggregate of some lines and add them up in a subsequent line. So now we see CA, FA, PNCA. Now if I go into current assets here, we'll see the same thing. This code is CA, which is used inside of assets. And this is aggregating other accounts here. So we have our bank and cash accounts. We have our receivables, current assets, and, payment, and prepayments. And these are the formulas that reference those codes plus the label that we're looking for. Now if I go to bank and cash accounts, this is actually utilizing an Odoo domain to say, give me all of the account where the account type equals asset cash. And the sub formula here is sum. So we're going to get everything here. This is the domain that's going to go look in the database, look at all account types or all journal entries or journal items rather that have account type, asset cash, and sum them all together using an Odoo domain, which is this domain given here. And we're going to save that value as balance. And we're going to be able to reference this entire thing by saying ba.balance here. And the group by here is going to be the account ID. So we're going to see multiple lines and each one is going to show based on the account ID for our asset cash accounts. And the label here is bank and cash accounts and its parent line is current assets listed above. And the same thing is true for all of these. So if I wanted to remove something, adjust something, change these formulas around so I can get the exact report I'm looking for, it's totally possible with this financial reporting framework. Now again, this is quite technical and it will take a lot of playing around and learning Odoo and understanding exactly how we utilize these accounts. But the main point here is to showcase that custom financial reports are possible. The vast majority of customers and clients typically just need these default reports, but it's nice to have that ability or to change some of these default options, filters, um, for your different reports. Again, we're going to look through different reports throughout our course, but this portion of the course was just dedicated to getting you familiar with some of the different options in these financial reports and how they are all configured and set up.